Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. I am Tabby, and we are reviewing Robot Quest Arena. Robot Quest Arena is a two to four player arena combat skirmish game, which is ultimately primarily a deck building experience. In the game, you're going to have your cute little adorable pre-painted robots, you're going to have your starting hand of 10 cards, and the goal of the game is ultimately to get as many points as possible, which is represented by taking down your opponent's health. Robots in the game are going to have their own health. They're going to have a bunch of red cubes and a blue cube. All of them are the health of the robot. And when you do damage to a robot, you're going to take its health, putting it into your victory points pile. It's going to be a little bit more dead, and you're going to be a little better off in victory points. The person who knocks that last final cube off, that cube over there is worth two points, so getting the final blow is helpful. The downside is if you do four damage and only have one health left, you're only doing that one damage. So there's a bit of a trade-off and a compensation around timing the perfect amount of damage on a robot. Past that, your goal in the game is to build and improve your deck. This is a deck building game. You're going to have a market of cards. Three standard cards, advanced batteries, heavy hammer, and rivet guns. Advanced batteries give you energy, which is used to buy more cards, and also to move around the board. The, these guns over here, heavy hammer and rivet guns, are going to be damage dealing cards that deal either melee damage or range damage. And then you have an entire market of rotating cards over here that will give you more ways of getting energy, more ways of doing damage. And then these variable uh, function cards, which very often do a whole bunch of everything else, from moving to the trashing cards to purging your deck, a whole bunch of other options from those function cards. Your role is to go ahead and build a better deck and figure out better ways to take down your opponents, gathering as many victory points as possible as you go through it. Uh, do you want to go ahead and take a turn? Show them how it works? Yes. So go ahead and draw five cards from your deck. One, two, three, four, five. And go ahead and put the cards down here and show everyone what actions you're taking and why. Okay, so you have three batteries, a hammer, and a jump jets. The three batteries are going to give you three energy, the hammer is going to do damage, and the jump jets let you move around the board a little bit more freely. Go ahead and take a turn. Let's see how this goes. And I will use my favorite card to get, an advanced battery. So by spending his three batteries over there, he's buying an advanced battery. So in the future, he'll have a three energy card and be able to use that to buy more and better cards then or just more advanced this batteries. In my discard pile. Discard pile, and I will use it next round. And now, jump jets. So jump jets are going to let you jump around the board over here. In this case, it lets you move two, but it also lets you jump, which means something like this, which you normally can't go over, you can jump over it with the jump jets. Yes, but who would like to do that? Because you're trying to head towards me to kill me. Yes, I will kill you, and I will suck your blood. It's not that kind of game. Not that kind of game. But we're gonna go ahead. I'm gonna. I mean, I will suck. Not suck your blood. I will suck. Drain your my. Fuel. Drain my. Uh, fuel. Fuel. Yeah. Drain my fuel. And also, these diamonds are worth five red. They're worth five reds, five points, and effectively you're just trying to get as many points as possible. I'll also note that in the center over here, if you start your turn in the center, you're going to get a point. And if you start your turn on any of the various effects on the board, you also get a benefit, which can be healing yourself, purging cards, getting more energy, a whole bunch of things. On and my turn. And yep. let's say I had a fishing hook uh, and Ava was here. I was here and Ava was here. You I me? can use my fishing hook and then pull him then he loses two health the tax in the center of the board and you can set up the train how they want they have a recommended starting setup but the tax in the center of the board do two damage when you move onto it and pulling your opponent onto it is a very effective way of punishing them for sitting in the middle but that's basically how you play robot customina ultimately you're, you're building a better deck you're taking out your opponent you're trying to fight when you die you'll respawn there's no real cost to dying by the way dying is the only cost is that you're no longer in the center and you have to like you know make your way back there but primarily the game is about trying to hurt your opponent and get victory points if you lose a few health, it doesn't make you worse off. It just means that your opponent is doing damage and getting points themselves. But that isn't the only way you can die. If you die, it also makes the game end faster because when we're out all of these blue cubes, we end the game! Basically, the blue cubes are the timer on the game. Every time you die, you're going to refill your health from the pool of available health over here. The blue cubes over here are the timer on their experience that you're going to have a certain recommended amount based on the player count, but you can modify that more or less depending on whether you want a longer or shorter experience. And with that, Tavi, what do you think about the game? I think that it will be fun for friends and everyone else. Friends and everyone else? What do you like about it? What, what was enjoyable? The enjoyable part is doing and getting cards and killing players. Killing players. Yeah, overall, this game, was there anything you don't like about the game? Anything I don't like? 
have people steal things that I want. People, that, that's true. That's true. There's going to be a limited market in terms of the cards you have. It's a rotating. The combination of the game is going to be a combination of fixed cards over here, but also rotating cards that are going to come out from this giant deck over here. You're going to have more cards that are rotating in and out, and that's going to result in the fact that sometimes, like, there's that one ca cannon card you wanted that uh, Ricky took from you, that seven-cost cannon that she proceeded to use to destroy us in the game. Yes. Yeah, that will happen in this. Uh, the game is going to be a very light, accessible game. It is definitely on the lighter side as far as deck building experiences. For the most part, the cards come down to different ways of dealing damage, different ways of gaining energy, and then a few function cards that mix things up. There is some degree of deck weeding, some degree of nuance as far as different things, but this is, I would argue, a light skirmish game, a light deck building game, that the main charm of it is just, it's simple, it's fun, it's appealing, but it does, to me at least, lack a certain amount of depth as far as the experience. It does have that skirmish aspect, in which you are constantly trying to close the distance between players and then hit each other as efficiently as possible. Although, depending on the build you go with, like getting a bunch of melee weapons and a bunch of ranged weapons, that only really works if you have things that are trying to close the distance. Otherwise, you're kind of mixing and matching what you're doing. Versus sticking very heavily on range and trying to maintain your distance, or sticking very heavily on things that affect a bunch of players at once, that can be a good way to get a bunch of points. I really like the fact that dying in this game is not a punishment. When your character dies, you just respawn. It's not a big deal to die. The main thing you want to focus on is dealing damage back to your opponents. And so trying to figure out the right mix of tools is, as in any deck building game, is a key part of the experience. But overall, it's light, it's simple, it's accessible, it's an easy enough game to play. Anything else you want to talk about? And this boots. Yep. These boots will kill The rotating you. hammers. Yes, because they have enough damage. If you see those pow thingies, that are like explosions. They deal five damage, as a, and as you see, someone has five health. Yeah, some of the characters will only have five health, so these rotating hammers, if you can spend the eight energy and get that card, you can just one-shot various enemies, which is a big deal for just being able to get five points all of a sudden in one fell swoop. As far as things I don't like about the game, the main thing for me is just going to be the game is on the lighter side. It is very, very much a lighter experience. I wish there were more variability as far as the different types of weapons. Like, a handful of weapons will have effects to them. More of the weapons are more focused on just different ways of dealing damage, and I think that the combo in this, the comboing aspect of the game is more on the limited side as far as feeling a lot of reward. There are times. Sometimes you get a good hand, you pull someone across some tacks, you deal two damage to them, you figure out the ways to hurt them as efficiently as possible, and you smash them towards you and just hit them with two or three heavy hammers and take them out. So there are certainly satisfying turns, but I think for the most part, it feels like you build a deck, you go around, you deal damage, and that's where the game caps out. And as well, this rotating hammer, it should not be rotating hammers, it should be rotating buckets. They look more like buckets, if you see. They are the rotating buckets of doom. That's what we're going to scribble out and cross over on the card. Yes. Overall, Tavi, how did you enjoy the game? What's your overall thoughts and opinion on all that? My opinion is that I like how you just collect things and then destroy other players and make the game end, but that is the saddest part, making the game end. Making the end. <laughs> Yeah, for me, I think, if we're going to final thoughts point, I think that to me, I enjoy what Robot Quest Arena is doing. I think it is great production value, solid charm, and ultimately it is rewarding in the sense that dying is not that much of a punishment, so players are more focused on just beating each other into scrap buckets of metal before reforming and just going back out into the world. And so the fact that it doesn't hurt you for dying does incentivize us to be a, just a giant beat em up, smash em up. I think it works best at higher player counts. At three and four players, you can have a lot more fun than as a two player experience. Uh, for me, I want to see more depth of the cards. Like, this is a game where, in its current form, like, I'd play it with my kids, I'd enjoy it, I'd have a fun time, but it's not one I would pull out as much with my regular game group, unless there were more depth to the cards in the game, which that could be something that happens throughout the course of expansions. As it is, it's a start, it's a nice starting foundation, it's a good intro skirmish game, and a good intro deck builder, all in one. But, I really do not like this, and so did not Vicky, because Abba can push me here, yeah. but it with only two points or energy or something, and I have to use three, which is annoying. Every but player basically has their own asymmetric robot with their own ability, and Crate and Rolf it takes more movement to push him. He's a big guy, he's a big chonky robot, and so players have a harder time pushing around uh, for better or for worse. This was the card that I was talking about. The grappling clamp. Yeah, Abba got that and he used it to spike us all around. Yeah, I constantly and frequently pulled them onto the tacks in the game. It was very satisfying. I didn't win. My daughter won. But it was very, very, very satisfying. And I lost. But as far as ratings in this one, for me, this is a 3.5 out of 5. <coughs> I enjoy it. It's fun. It is very much like, I think the production is great. I want more depth in the system. I like, I like the idea of a skirmish deck building game. I've tried multiple iterations of them and they've always been fine, but none have completely 
completely and totally landed for me yet. They've all been good, which is hard for me because I, I really like skirmish games and I really like deck building games and the combination just feels like it would work really well. Like just recently I played a, a worker placement area control game that worked really well. The combination mechanics just gave me a very satisfying experience and I just, I want, I want a good deck building skirmish game that really hits the various genres I'm looking for. What's the last thing you want to show here? Abba took this one, but I should have had it. It was my character. That is, that is the card art from his character, from Pete, Pe Petri, and Jari in the game. All right. It's not fair. And that's basically it. That is Robot Quest Arena from Wise Wizards Games. Until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. And I am Tavi. And have a good one.